The last one's the coolest one. The last uh, one is Ant Man. Uh, okay, I'm joking. It's not actually called Ant Man. It's called the Ant Colonization Heuristic. It is legitimately about ants. Okay, so I'm going to show you. Okay. Is that kind of um, I yeah, hear it's good. I haven't watched it. I don't know. Obviously, everyone disagrees. Oh, yeah. Just watch it. Because it's a Marvel movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like for the sake of watching it. It's, it's, it's not as good as some Marvel movies, but yeah. it's, 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 it's good as a movie by itself. Okay. Yeah. All right. So here's the way it works, right? Whenever it's ready. Sorry, I asked for that. I know by saying anime, but okay. Now. Contemplate this for a second, okay? Ants. Ants. They do this kind of thing. I want you to now stop thinking about this as a traveling salesman at cities. I want you to think about this as a map with food sources on it that ants are after, okay? And they're gonna colonize wherever they find food, okay? Now, clearly, just like with the salesman, it is in the interest of the ants to have the most efficient path through. But here's the crazy thing, okay? How have we gone about doing this? Answer, with a lot of intelligence, okay? Like we've thought about this hard. We have these like sophisticated techniques for doing this. What techniques have ants got? They don't have anything in terms of intellect. I'll tell you what they do have though. Yes, yes. Well, more specifically, uh, I hope I'm spelling this right. You can look it up and tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. More specifically, they have pheromones. Now, just get this. Okay. Um, what this, what we're about to show you, what I'm about to show you, is what we call emergent behavior. Maybe I'll write that down for you. Emergent behavior. It's this idea of things that are not being organized from like some top structure being imposed on them, but just by virtue of each individual and the things that are driving it. A behavior emerges out of all the individuals working together. Okay? Now, this really is the key. If you don't know, pheromones are basically just a chemical, right? And ants can smell it, they can sense it. Okay? Now, all ants are going to do, what guides them, is that they will follow, they'll literally follow their noses. Okay? So what they'll do is, wherever they can sense the pheromone, they will follow that path. Now, there are particular ants that they have the job of giving off pheromone, okay, um, like scout, scout ants, but all ants do this, okay? So here's the way it works. Let's pick a start point. So here's our start point, okay, and my ant. Okay, now, from here, do they know where the food is? And the answer is no, they do not, okay? So simply what the scout parties do is they just go, they just go in, in like random directions, and they just go until they like find something, find something, find something. Now here's the thing, right? They're just, they're just fanning out. They're also going in all these other directions as, as well. But I don't need to cloud my diagram. What happens is, just imagine, what happens, well, let's go for this one. What happens when they find this food? Okay? So they find the food, they've found food, so they're going to bring it back to their colony. Right? Now remember, these ants that are traveling, as they go, they are leaving a pheromone behind them. Okay? So as they travel and then travel back, they've laid twice as much pheromone as an ant that's gone to another place that's like the same distance, but there's nothing there, okay? Because once they've gone there, they've, they haven't come back. Right? They didn't need to come back. They didn't find anything. Okay? So there is... Well, <laughs> I would assume they keep going, okay? <clears throat> but the point is now, if I'm a new ant here, right? And I'm like, which way do I go? Well, I'm going to follow my nose, and there is twice as much pheromone on this path as this one. So I'm going to take this path. Does that make sense? Yeah. So now, that's one layer, right? Obviously, where there's food, there's going to be more parts there because they're going everywhere, right? And they will prune off the places where there's no food. But even better than that, I said there's going to be pheromone on this part, right? Now, just have a look at this spot here. Right? See that spot there? Now, this spot here is closer than the first one I found. Do you see that? Okay. Now, because it is closer, when they go back, it doesn't take them as long, right? They can do it faster, which means that for example, suppose this length is not, but suppose it was half the length of this one over here, okay? And let's say it takes an hour to go um, from here to, let's label these things, shall we? From A to B and then back. That takes an hour, okay? Now, because this is half the distance, right? In that same hour, what's going to happen for the ants that go from A to C? 
It's half the distance, right? They're going to go there and then back, and then in that same time, they go there and back again. So now there's four times as much pheromone on this path because it's closer. Do you see how such a simple mechanism finds the most efficient path? Okay, because automatically the paths that are closest are going to be laden with the most pheromone and that's what the ants will follow. And the same thing will happen when they go here rather than here or here rather than over there, right? They're still going to find stuff and bring it back, but this path will be weak and this one will be very strong. So it's going to become like an ant highway, okay, by virtue of this simple mechanism, okay? Now... The cool thing is, mathematicians are like, this is ingenious, right? They call this, by the way, this has a proper term in engineering. They call this biomimicry. When we see a design that, you know, has been produced out in nature and it's really, really good at what it does, right? We try to imitate it, right? We try to imitate living systems, okay? That's exactly right. There's just, you can just, on and on and on. There's so many examples, right? Yeah. Same as nearest neighbor. Now, it's like nearest neighbor, but nearest neighbor will just go straight to one, right? This is actually going to create, this creates a rather more complicated network, right? A more sophisticated thing. Because what will happen is, um, it, will, it will create this path and it'll be stronger. It'll create this path and it'll be stronger. But it won't destroy either of these paths. Whereas the nearest neighbor just takes the first one, okay? Over time, just imagine, right? Suppose now someone wants to go from here all the way over to here, okay? Now, if you just went the nearest neighbor technique, right, there will only ever be one path, okay? But over time, it may actually happen that there's a different network of paths, a bit like, you know, if you go to parents and they're like driving between the same point, same two points over and over again, right? They quickly work out because of like traffic and time of day, oh, there's actually, it's not the closest by distance, right? But, you know, this point might have less traffic or this point might have less terrain or something like that, which isn't as obvious just on this scheme, okay? So, you're right, it has the same kind of idea, but it's more sophisticated than that and much more clever because ants are awesome. Okay. 